Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to easily create a vast star field amidst interstellar clouds of galaxies and faraway constellations. Create a new document by pressing Ctrl N on Windows or Command N on a Mac. Make the width 1550 pixels, the height 870 pixels, and the resolution 150 pixels per inch. Then click OK or press Enter or Return. If your foreground and background colors aren't black and white respectively, press D on your keyboard or click this icon. We'll fill the background with a foreground color by pressing Alt-Delete on Windows or Option-Delete on a Mac. Go to Filter, Noise, and Add Noise. Make the amount 400%, Gaussian, and Monochromatic. Then click OK or press Enter or Return. Make a copy of the layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Click off the eyeball to hide the layer and click on the thumbnail of the background to make it active. Go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Blur it 0.5 pixels and click OK or press Enter or Return. We'll adjust its levels by pressing Ctrl or Command L. For the input black, type in 200, and for the input midtones, type in 0.42. Make the top layer visible and active. Go back to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur, and this time blur it 2 pixels. Open Levels again, and this time in the input black field, type in 170, and for the input white field, type in 172. There are less stars, but they're a bit larger now. We need to blur them slightly to make them a bit soft. So go back to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Blur it one pixel. Next, we'll give them a slight outer glow. Open the Channels panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and Channels. Click the small circular icon at the bottom to make a selection of all the stars and then open back up your layers panel. We can trash the layer of the larger stars since we now have a selection of their shapes. Click the new layer icon to make a new layer. In this layer, we'll fill the selection of the large stars with white. Since white is the background color, press Ctrl or Command plus Delete. Keep in mind, it may be difficult to see that the selection is now filled with white due to the size of the stars. To deselect it, press Ctrl or Command D. Double click the large stars to open its layer styles. Click Outer Glow and click the color box. Pick White and click OK. Change the blend mode to Normal and increase the size to 10 pixels. Then Click OK. As I toggle back and forth, you can see the difference with and without the large glowing stars. It'll make more of a difference once we add color later. Let's merge the layers by pressing Ctrl or Command E. Click the New Layer icon to make a new layer, and press Alt or Option plus Delete to fill it with black, which is the foreground color. Go to Filter, Render, and Clouds. Change its Blend Mode to Color Dodge, and we'll make a new layer under the Active Layer by Control clicking or Command clicking on the New Layer icon. In this layer, we'll brush in colors. Click the foreground color to open the color picker. Pick a rich blue. Its hexadecimal value is 0018FF. Then click OK. Open your brush tool and make the size 700 pixels, the hardness 0%, and the opacity 10%. Then press Enter or Return. Press the F5 key at the top of your keyboard to open your brush preset panel. 
Make sure none of the settings are checked except smoothing. Press F5 again to close the panel. Now gently brush over wide areas of your image. To reduce the size of your brush, press the left bracket key. Let's add another color. Click on your foreground color again, and this time pick a brighter color. I'll pick an aqua. Its value is 00 FFEA. To increase your brush size, press the right bracket key. Continue to brush over your star field to simulate gases, constellations, nebulas, and other formations. Go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Blur it approximately 80 pixels. I find that blurring the colors softens it and makes it look more ethereal. Let's add another color. I'm picking 6000FF. I'll increase the size. I'll add one more color. This time I'll choose a warm, rich yellow. FFD200. I'll brush over an area that already has a lot of color to increase the density of its formations. Next, we'll add a celestial sphere. Open the rock texture file I provided. Open your elliptical marquee tool and go to a corner of the document. Hold down Shift as you drag a circular selection to the opposite corner. Press Ctrl or Command J to cut and copy it onto its own layer. Go to Filter, Distort, and Spherize. The amount is 100%. Click OK or press Enter or Return. Press Ctrl or Command F to repeat the filter. To place it onto your star document, press V to open your Move tool and drag it up onto the tab of the star file. Without releasing your cursor, drag it down onto the image and release. If it's not on the top, just drag it up. To resize it, open your Transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. Go to a corner, and when you see a diagonal double arrow, hold down Shift and Alt on Windows or Shift and Option on a Mac as you drag it in or out. To reposition it, Go inside the transform and move it. Then press enter or return. Click the new layer icon to make a new layer. Control click or command click on the thumbnail of the sphere to make a selection of its shape. We'll fill the selection with black. To do this, press D on your keyboard to make the foreground and background colors default to black and white and then press Alt or Option plus Delete to fill it with a foreground color. Click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection next to the active layer. Click off the chain link to unlock the layer mask with the layer. This will allow us to reposition or resize either one independently of the other. Click on the black circle to make it active and drag it to a position that shows a sliver of the sphere under it. Go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Blur it 15 pixels. I'd like to enlarge the shadow, so I'll open my Transform tool and enlarge it. The shadow is a bit too dense, so I'll reduce its opacity to 90%. Next, we'll add some glows to the sphere itself. Make the sphere layer active, and double-click it to open its layer styles. Click Outer Glow and the color box. For the color, type in D7CAB8. Since we'll use the same color for its inner glow, copy its value by highlighting it and pressing Ctrl or Command C. Then click OK. The blend mode is screen, the opacity is 35%, and the size is 60 pixels. Click Inner Glow and the color box. Press Ctrl or Command V to paste the code into the field. Then click OK or press Enter or Return. 
change the blend mode to lighten. Make the opacity 40% and the size 60 pixels. The last effect will make it look like there's a bright star just behind the horizon of the sphere. Make a composite snapshot of your image by making the top layer active and pressing Control Shift Alt E on Windows or Command Shift Option E on a Mac. Go to Filter, Render, and Lens Flare. The lens type is 35mm Prime and the brightness is 75%. Drag the lens flare right to the edge of the sphere and click OK. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.